liberals backlash blacklisting the donors of Donald Trump. This ought to be interesting. Well, in case you missed it with all the Hurricane Dorian news and enjoying your life with, you know, Labor Day weekend, the has-been cast from Will and Grace decided over the weekend after they found out that President Donald Trump was coming to Hollyweird for a special fundraising event, they ought to know who's responsible for it, who's doing this, who in Hollywood is actually giving Donald Trump money, because they need to be outed. They need to have their names publicized. They need to be blacklisted. And who came to President Trump's defense? Whoopi Goldberg. Will and Grace, Deborah Messing and Eric McCormick are calling on The Hollywood Reporter to print a list of all the attendees of a Beverly Hills fundraiser for you know who, so they know who they don't want to work with. They say that the public has a right to know. Is that true? When the last time people did this, yeah. people ended up killing themselves. Yeah. Yeah. This is not a good idea, mm -hmm. okay? Listen, your your yeah, idea ideas. of who you don't want to work with is your personal business. Do not encourage people to print out lists because the next list that comes out, your name will be on and then people will be coming after you. No one, you, we, nobody. We had something called the blacklist. And a lot of really good people were accused of stuff. Nobody cared whether it was true or not. They all, they were accused. Yeah. And they lost their right to work. You don't have the right. In this country, people can vote for who they want to. That is one of the great rights of this country. You don't have to like it. But you, we don't, we don't go after people because we don't like who they voted for. We don't go after them that way. We can talk about issues and stuff, but we don't print out lists. And I'm sure you guys misspoke when you said that because you, it sounded like a good idea. Think about it. Read about it. Remember what the blacklist actually meant to people. And don't encourage anyone, anyone, to do it. And then because apparently we are in the age of Aquarius and the planets have aligned just right and... Dorian happened. Joyless, not a babe heart, agreed with her. But I happen to be against that kind of thing. I, yeah. I, I do believe that you should know if a company gave a lot of money to to uh, uh, Trump in this mm -hmm. particular case. I mean, I know some of the, uh, this, the names of these companies are going around on Facebook. And, you know, you can, you can say, no, I'm not going to buy uh, that two by four from that company. Mm -hmm. right. But when it's individuals, I think that then you're, in, you're, in, you're stalking mm -hmm. and you're starting to endanger that person's life. So I don't approve of that. I I'm sorry, maybe I missed a memo or the meeting, but I thought everyone in Hollywood that hated Trump and threatened to leave the country if he was ever elected president, why are they still here? After all, I I'm one of the people within the media that's offered to buy some plane tickets. I mean, I figure that most of these Hollywood elites really aren't as um, wealthy as they would appear. Remember, the name of the game is acting, pretending to be something that you're not. So I don't naturally assume that all Hollywood personalities are actually well off. I figure most of them uh, live gig to gig and they run up a whole lot of debt in between gigs so that as soon as they get a paycheck from a gig, they're just paying off the old debt so they can start incurring new debt. So that's why out of the, the goodness of my heart, I, I am a pastor. I, I do have compassion. I, I offered to buy some plane tickets, but uh, nobody has yet to uh, take me up on that. And if Will and Grace and the cast have decided that, you know, Donald Trump is just so dangerous, we've got to out as donors. Well, my question is, why are you even still here? You were supposed to be gone. Oh, that's right. Again, you're actors. You pretend. You lie. Now, Whoopi Goldberg, I have to say this, she is what I refer to as a classic true liberal and let me let me define that 
Whoopi Goldberg really does believe in anti-establishment, let people have rights, let there be unbound, unbridled freedom. She's actually more of a libertarian than a card-carrying Democrat. She might not admit that, but that's really what her ideology is. She really does believe in just open freedom. Now, that, of course, entails giving a whole lot of people and groups freedom to do things that obviously many would find morally objectionable, questionable, and outright distasteful. But nonetheless, Whoopi is a true uh, freedom purist at heart. And for that, I have to tip my hat and say, good for you. And she's absolutely 100% spot on, correct, nailed it. Why these constant boycotts against conservatives, conservative groups, conservative personalities, you know, at some point that's going to turn around to bite you. Hollywood's feeling that effect. A lot of movies that they expected over the past year or so to do really well, well, some have done okay, but none have really done quite what they thought. And it might be the fact that Hollywood is waking up to the fact, I'm talking about the producers, the studio heads, they're actually beginning to figure out um, conservatives go to movies, conservatives buy tickets, conservatives spend money conservatives finance what we do. So if we want to keep doing what we're doing, well, there's no nice way to say this. We need to stop pissing off all the conservatives all the time. Not to mention, most of that Hollywood elite group out there fell all over themselves when he was the Don. Building buildings, pulling off incredible real estate deals in New York and around the world, and hosting the number one TV show in the world, The Apprentice. They couldn't get enough of Donald Trump. Soon as he announced his candidacy for president, and once it became pretty obvious he had a real shot, all of a sudden he became the great Satan. All of a sudden he was a homophobe, xenophobe, warmonger, you name it. They just threw out the adjectives and inserted Donald Trump's name. And, of course, you had people like Rosie O'Donnell just going bat crap crazy. And then, once he got elected, well, everybody from Madonna to Kathy Griffin with their, you know, death threats against him. I mean, Hollywood literally went off the rails to where it's very apparent Alyssa Milano, she really needs to stop tweeting and podcasting. And she needs to get under really, really good psychiatric help. That all said, Will and Grace, and I know that's not their real names, but, you know, that's how we know them or kind of remember them or I never really watched the show. They are striving so bad to still be relevant. It's got to be a hard thing in an industry that is built completely around vanity, ego, and getting your self-esteem from the affirmation and adulation of others. That when that goes away, when you cease to be relevant and you become irrelevant, it's crushing. Now, you got to think that they're a little bit taken back by the backlash. Not the backlash they expected from conservative media outlets and conservative pundits. But the backlash they're taking from people in Hollywood itself, members of their community, their peer group. And you know they got to be sitting there looking at each other like, Wait, what, what is this? Robert De Niro, yes, that has been, drooling on himself, thinks he's actually one of the characters in one of his gangster movies. And i got news for you, Bobby. You're not Jimmy Conway. You're not Al Capone. So this bit where every time you go to an award ceremony, you F Trump, and I, I'm going to F and beat him up, and I like to F and kick him in the face. I like to F and punch his 
lights out and knock his teeth down his throat and all that hogwash that you keep uh, spouting. It's got to be something now for Will and Grace to say, wait, these people have literally threatened physical violence to the president. I mean, Whoopi Goldberg, not Whoopi Goldberg, Rosie O'Donnell, outside the fence of the White House with a bullhorn, screaming obscenities, and we gotta get this guy! You had Winona Judge or Ashley Judd, whichever one it was. I'm a nasty woman. Madonna fantasizing about blowing up the White House. Johnny Depp saying, I has fantasies and dreams about assassinating the president. And what do Will and Grace say? Hey, you know what we could do? Everyone in Hollywood that's actually like, you know, in the closet for Trump, we could out them. And if they've given him money, we could let all of Hollywood know so that we refuse to work with them anymore and refuse to let them have work. And now there's this backlash. I mean, it's literally a backhanded backlash. Now, is that out of some type of core value? Well, not for most of them, no. I, like I said, I am defending Whoopi on this. I think this is her core belief of who she is. She really does believe this is bad policy, a bad idea, bad, 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 and it is totally and completely against the American ideal of we have a Bill of Rights, and in that Bill of Rights, we are guaranteed the freedom of speech, the, the freedom to, to think what we want to think and to act on those beliefs as long as they're not illegal, and that we have the right to vote, and to vote any way we so choose. But this is such a about-face from Mad Maxine Waters and her uh, uh, godfather of, of soul, James Brown hairdo. If you see them in a restaurant, in a gasoline station, you get in their faces. This is an about-face from Eric Holder saying, no, when they go low, we don't go high, we kick them. The people that have protested and run people like Ted Cruz out of restaurants and have spit on uh, Sarah Huckabee Sanders and and the list just goes on and on and on. Now all of a sudden, all of a sudden, putting out a list of the names of the Trump donors, no, 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 no. I think there's a twofold reason why they're now adapting this posture. One, it really has backfired on them. The protests outside Mitch McConnell's home, the stalking of Trump staff, Trump cabinet members, it's not playing well in America. People don't like that. It's wrong. It's vile. It's dangerous. So I think they understand there's... there's there's some real danger here. People really could get hurt. And who is actually going to be seen as stirring the pot and creating the unrest, creating this incivility that they're constantly lecturing the president? He's so uncivil, and everybody in America is about hate now because of him. But yet, who is it that's constantly stirring up the hate? The left. And there are members within the left that realize this ain't good. We've got to stop this. That's number one. Number two, it's money. It's money. They're not saying so, but it's money. Hollywood is financially hurting. Subscribers are leaving Netflix by the tens of thousands because, well, you've got the Obamas on there now making decisions on what will get made, what won't. Of course, we know all the documentaries that come out. You know, it's going to be about evil white men and how we've oppressed America and, you know, oppressed peoples. And, you know, it, and Hollywood, at the end of the day, their God is money. Now, hey, if they can make money and stand on the right side of politically correct issues, like we are, we are totally opposed to, to discrimination, we're totally opposed to discrimination against women. And they do that so that as directors, 
producers, movie heads, they can have a casting couch and bang a bunch of young starlets. But, you know, they're sensitive to Me Too. Yeah. Uh, hey, if they can make money and, you know, tout anti-American things like complete gun confiscation, the loss of personal rights and privacy, it's a, hey, they're all for it. But when they start losing money, which is their God, all of a sudden, they have a come-to-Jesus moment. Now, they want to be seen as patriotic. They want to be seen as level-headed. They want to be seen as pro-ideas and pro-rights. Even if we disagree, everybody has the right to vote for who they want. That's what they're saying. That's not what they actually all believe. But what they're hoping is if they say it enough, you and me will go back to the movies and start making them some money again. See, money is how you get their attention. And to the ideologues like the uh, Alyssa Fathead Milanos that work there and think that, oh, Hollywood, we're, we're the bastion of morality. We're the ones that do the... This is a woman that just did a podcast, and I've done a video on it, so look for it in my archives here. She did a podcast basically saying how proud she is she killed two of her own children so she could have a movie career. That's the kind of sick-ticket individual that Alyssa Milano is. And Alyssa Milano just assumes that, well, everyone in Hollywood's like her, especially the movie heads and the studio heads. Nope, they're not. They're not. They're about money. By the way, you know why Alyssa Milano really isn't in anything anymore? She doesn't make money. She's a political activist. And if you notice it in Hollywood, especially, oh, I'm going to get some nasty little comments on this, especially as females become more and more active politically and take on activist positions, have you noticed that they work less and they start looking really old before their time and they start looking hard and mean and, I'm sorry, guys are looking at that thinking, I don't care if I was drunk and she was the last woman at the bar, I ain't going home with that. Sorry, even as a pastor, that's life 101 right there. So, there's a come to Jesus moment now. Let the private individuals vote for whoever they want and support whoever they want. Okay. Okay, Hollywood. Okay, liberal left. The real reason you're doing it, it backfired and you got backlash and you've lost support, which means you've lost money. This is going to be an interesting election cycle. Hey, that's it for this rant. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you give us a thumbs up. Share this video. Please, if you're not a subscriber, subscribe to the channel. And please make sure that you smack the bell for my next rant.